Hello, this is the final part of the basketball game. Really well done for getting through this far. Um, and today we're going to be turning um, the game from just sort of a projectile motion of a ball into an actual game. And so I'll start with um, looking at... I've sort of moved on a bit between tutorials, and so I'll talk you through the changes. If you'll remember when the and we had when the space bar was clicked, um, it would cause the ball to bounce. Well, I've changed that to when the mouse is pressed wherever. So I place the, when the flag is clicked, forever if mouse down, which can be found off the sensing menu, go to mouse down there, um, and then it will throw the ball. The other thing that I've done is I've added two um, extra commands. Wait 0.5 seconds, that means that it just gives the user a sense of where the ball has gone and then glide across for five seconds from to this X and Y position. The weight can be found under the control menu and the glide can be found under the motion menu. So what this does is resets the ball once it comes back. Um, and so we can get rid of the when the R is clicked script. Um, and then most of the more interesting stuff has been done here just with two more commands. Before we had power and angle and you'd have to set that manually, what I've done now is, when the flag is clicked forever, point towards the mouse pointer, which means the direction of the ball, this blue line here, is pointing towards the pointer. And then every second I set the angle, as in this, this global variable here, to be 90 minus the direction. And that ensures that as I move the mouse pointer, the angle changes between naught, which is just on its flat, and 90, which is directly upright. That's really useful. And then the second thing I've done is I've set the power to be equal to the distance between the sprite and the mouse pointer divided by 5. I decided to divide it by 5 to calibrate it so that when it was right up in the top corner it was 100 which is pretty powerful. When it was really close it was only a, a small amount. So what this means now by doing this is that I can move the mouse around and as I click the mouse it will follow and jump in relation relationally to where I where I placed it um, and so um, I don't actually need to see these two variables anymore so I can go to variables and I can unclick the visible part of it and the mount and it should just move around as you wish so um, that's good um, I would if I were you I would pause the um, video here and just get make sure that you've got all of this working in your script. Now the final thing I'd like to do is um, have the ball so that it's um, have some sort of moving panel that you can fire the ball against and also a notion of the score um, and maybe an instruction as well which is always important and so to start with we'll go for the moving panel that'll be a new sprite but before that when you have more than one sprite it's always good to name your sprites so I'll rename that from sprite2 to, to ball and I'm going to make a new sprite which will be my paddle and um, I'll just paint this one in. You can probably find a decent sprite yourself off the interweb um, and so here's the paddle um, okay, okay and that should move, I want this to move up and down so it's quite a simple um, a simple uh, command I think uh, in that I will just get it to move go to one way, then go to another um, for a certain length of time and repeat that consistently while the flag is clicked. So forever going to two positions. I just need to check what the two positions are. So this is the top that I'd like it, so that's 208 and 245. We'll call that to round it off and make it 200 and um, 1, 2, 5 and then when I want it to be right at the bottom, it will be um, 210. See, I suppose I'll stay at 200. Right? 200 and uh, minus 85. So if we now click the flag, we'll see what happens. Good, and that's just going up and down. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to get the ball to um, add one to a variable called score when it hits there. Um, and so to do that um, I would like it to 
Um, it'll be a forever if touching the ball. Not forever, but forever if. Touching. I suppose I should call this paddle as well. The ball. Um, sensing, touching the ball. See, this is why we named our sprites so that it becomes more meaningful when you have to select them. Um, forever if touching the ball, and then I'm going to need to create another variable, make a variable, call that score. Okay. And at the very start, set the score to zero. And change the score by one. And you also should make it wait, because what happens is it actually touches the ball for quite some time, and that means that the score can jump up by more than one when it's when it's on there, and you'll need it to wait a little while. So we go for two seconds there. Let's see this in action now. There we go. And you'll see the score's gone up by one. Um, now you might want to make this a little harder. One way that you can do that is by um, changing the size of the ball. So if you right click on the ball and resize the sprite and make it fiddly. There we go. Um, yep. And hopefully that'll work. Good. So um, what we've got now is um, a game with a score, a moving paddle, a ball that moves in a projectile motion and resets back. Um, and in the process you've learned about creating your own blocks like throw ball, having global variables and also passing those into um, blocks in the form of parameters. Um, and hopefully this has been an enjoyable tutorial. Um, I've been Matt Scott, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Matt Scott, and I hope that uh, this has been useful to you.